So now let's add the secure firmware update services. So this is the main detail about this. We will need to modify Kubemix to have these new services and we will use KubeID and modify the application. To add the firmware update capability in our application, we need to modify it to have the capability to download the new firmware. This new firmware will be delivered encrypted and signed or sent encrypted and signed from the PC. And then we will use four different PSR PI. The first one, PSR firmware update write, allow to write the new firmware in the downloading slot. Then we've got the PSR firmware install. That means we have received this new application and we want to trigger an installation. Then we need to trigger a reboot because remember, it will be the second stage bootloader, STUBot, that will be detect first this new application and then we'll decrypt it, check the integrity and authenticity, and we'll install it. And then we have the last API, which is named PSA Firmware Update Accept. This API should be called by the new application install at its first execution. It means, OK, I'm running well. Everything is OK for this new application. If the new install application doesn't call this API and there is a reset, we will roll back to the previous version of the application. It's a way to ensure that this new application is running well. So it's up to you to have fine criteria to check if your application is running properly and to accept this. Once you have accepted this version, you can't roll back to the previous one. So let's check together the secure firmware update algorithm. On the PC, we've got the timestamp event version 2. We will use Trusted Package Creator and also an OM key, that means new key that will be used to encrypt, but also to sign the binary. Once we've got a version encrypted and signed, we will send it through the user modem to our application version 1. This one will call the PSA API PSA firmware update write. And the version 2 of our application encrypted and signed will be right in the downloading area. Then our application will request the installation and finally reset request the reboot. So what happened during this reboot? The STROT, the second stage bootloader, will detect a new firmware in the downloading area. It will check integrity and authenticity of this one and if it's OK, it will exchange, swap the content of the downloading area with the active area. That way, when we execute this new version, we can check if the accept is called, and if the accept is called, we finish the installation. If the accept is not called and a reset occurs, it will roll back to the previous version. This swap mechanism is done sector by sector and is, I will say, resistant to any power loss or reset during this mechanism. It's inspired for MCU boot, and you can find some documentation on the web about it. So after the reboot, We've got in the execution slot or non-secure area the timestamp event version 2, and we still have the version 1 in the secure part downloading. Then we need to accept. On our exception, the version 1 will be deleted. So let's come back to Kubemix, add the requested secure services, and add the source modification needed. So let's come back to Kubemix, still in the Secure Manager API, so it was in the middleware and software. Here, regarding the services, we already have done the cryptography previously with Jaslyn, and now I will add the firmware update. So just click on this one. Another thing we need to do is to add the CRC IP activation, which is used by the one modem protocol that we will use to transmit the new version. So I can close this category and go in the computing. In the computing, select CRC. Just put it in the non-secure context and activate it. This is all what we need to do with Cubemix. So generate the code. I will close. And now I will come back to my cube ID. So here I need just to refresh my project. So again, click on the project, non-secure. 
right click and refresh. I will need to drag and drop some new source files from the material I delivered to you. So if you go still in the workshop hands on material in a timestamp event detection, project page files here, from the include files, I would like you to take the update underscore firmware.h on ymodem.h and I will drag and drop them in the include folder. I copy the files and this is done. You can check it. Ymodem update and in a similar way, we go back in the source folder and here you will take update firmware c on ymodem.c and drag and drop them inside the source file source folder sorry i copy it and now i have to modify slightly my code so as you can see we just need to add the include update firmware on the check update request in the y1 loop so if i come back to my main.c and I will just copy past this code update firmware.h, so just this include, and then I will just add a check update a request in the while one loop. Okay, then I can save, I can then Compile it and again after the compilation you can see that a possible script is called with a TPC success and I would like to give you some detail about this possible script what is done there so I would like to give you some detail about this possible script it will use a trusted package creator, which is a tool that is delivered in the same package at stm 32 Cube Programmer. As input, it will take your binary of the, your application and one key to generate the signatures. That means to check the, which allow to check the integrity and the authenticity of your firmware, and one encryption key, which allow you to ensure about the confidentiality of this firmware. And then it will generate two files, one in a bin format and in an X format. This binary is encrypted and there is also the metadata with a signature which allow a secure boot to check integrity and authenticity of this firmware once decrypted. Why two format? The second format is generated and ensure that if you want to flash it, it will flash this binary in the downloading slot, while this binary has been, I would say, generated to be executed in the execution slot. Where those key come from? The crypto scheme that is used here is elliptic curves. For the signatures, it was ACGSA P256, and for the encryption, SAUS P256. The key has been provisioned at the same time than the secure manager. If you have a look in uh, all the logs of the installation of the Secure Manager, you can find the details about them on how you can change or regenerate this key to personalize it. Because for sure, for your product, you will need to use your key for the encryption, but also for the signature generation and signature check. So let's flash this application with now all these firmware update capabilities. So I right click on the project, debug, CC++ application and if I check my Duratum we can see now we've got a new menu somehow or he invite us to press 1 to trigger a firmware update so if I launch my application sorry here, if I press 1, my firmware is now waiting for a new version of the application. So let's create a second version of this application where we will just change the printf. So if I come back to CubeID, I'm stopping the debugging. And here, I just change version 1 by version 2. So let's compile it. 
And again, the possible script will be executed. So I will have those firmware signed and encrypt generated. And it was this one that I will send uh, Y modem protocol. KPG success. Now, if I come back to my Terotem, I will go in the menu File, Transfer, Y modem, Send. So if I go in my on the folder, my timestamp event detection application, I've got a binary folder. And here, I've got the two files I told you before. So the encrypted and signed version .bin on the .x. With a Y modem, we will use a bin format. So please select timestamp event detection non-secure encrypted sign.bin. I open it. So downloading is ongoing. And once the transfer is done, you can see an installation have been triggered. Let's check together exactly what happened inside our application. So we've got here the version one installed and here are the different traces that you have observed. First, when we have finished or when we receive the different packet, we will use the PSF firmware write. The timestamp event version 2 will be right here in the downloading area, still encrypted with the signatures. Then we will request a firmware installation. That means we have finished to download this version. And you can see that the downloading slot changed from image undefined to image candidate. This is just the status of this slot. The next step, we will trigger a reboot. What happened during the reboot? You remember, at startup, STUO check the downloading slot. He will find a new version. He will decrypt this version and check the signatures. If this one is correct, then he will swap the active on the downloading slot. I mean the content of the slot. Once this is done, installation is nearly finished. The last step, I will say, will be the firmware accept. You remember this one? But just about the validation is not needed here. Why? It's because, you remember, we have downloaded the version 1 with the debugger. That means without the metadata. So there is no possibility for this application to check integrity and authenticity of the version 1. So this is considered as there is no image at all. So here we keep the version 2 as installed and because we have nothing to roll back. So what we will do is to create a version 3 and we will download it also with Y modem protocol, so with the metadata, I mean, encrypted and signed. On that way, we will have in the execution slot and in the downloading slot, complete version with signatures. And in such configuration, the firmware accept will be needed. So let's do this now. So if I come back, I will create a version 3 and we'll compile it. Post build is done. I come back to my Y modem and in the version 2, I will trigger a new firmware installation. File, transfer, Y modem, send. Here I still need to go to my project and my hands on timestamp event detection, binary, and I will select the bin format. And this time I will install the version 3. And in such a context, this time we will need to have the firmware accept to be cool, and this is already implemented. So you can see that just after the reboot, in the active slot, we've got some pending install. That means our application is ready to be installed, but it's not completely done because the accept have not been cool. And in the downloading slot, we also have an image pending install. That means an image with its metadata. So if the accept was not cool, then it will roll back to the previous one. But here, between this line and this line in the code, I, I call the PSAPI accept. So 
if I come back in my presentation, you can see the PSF firmware accept is just cool at this step. On doing this, we finish the installation of the version 3. If you want to have further details, I will say about uh, those PSI API on information. So you can check the implementation in updatefirmware.c, but the different slots, I will say um, value possible, are defined also in the wiki. So it's the first time that I refer to the wiki. It's really where you can find a lot of documentation about STM32H5 security, secure manager, and such kind of things. Uh, I will deal with this also in another part, but please remember this. If you want to check the implementation in the update firmware.c, you will see that the PSA API here are quite simple. Nothing really complicated. Uh, just the accept, as you can see, was not on this slide but the next one when i reboot if i found that in the active slot there is something that pending install i automatically accept so it's really straightforward here so everything is in place our, our application timestamp event detection has encryption of data have firmware update capability but you remember we are still in true zone closed so that means at each boot we don't really check the signature of our application because we still want to have the capability to download a new firmware with an AD and such kind of things. So it's just, I would say, a hook to allow a developer to use a secure manager without any constraint about the signature and such kind of things. But as everything is in place now, we can go and close the device. And once the device is closed, that means you can't connect, I would say, without authentication to the target. And at each boot, the signature of your firmware will be checked. That means the integrity and the authenticity of this one will be guaranteed. So for the moment, we are in chosen close. That means the G tag is still open on this part. And we will move to this product state, which is closed to so an equivalent to RGP level one, if you remember this. We've got still possi possibility to reopen the, the debugging link. We'll deal with this in another part. But uh, now the integrity and the authenticity will be checked at each boot. So let's launch now Cube Programmer to modify this option byte. So the first things to ensure first is to change the mode. Here you should be in hot plug mode. Because you remember, we can't connect under reset. At the reset, the MCU will boot in secure mode, and you are not allowed to connect in a secure mode. Only the non secure part is open. So we will be in the hot plug. I connect. I got some error data read here. This is mainly due to the fact that on these tabs, it tried to read the address 8 million, which is a secure location on the flash. So it can't read it, but I managed to connect. Now I will change the option byte. And in the option byte, we've got the product state. And the product state for the moment is A6, trust zone closed. Debug partially open, only non secure. Let's move to close. That means the debug is disabled, but regression is still possible. Don't move to lock state. Lock state is a final state. You can't reopen at all your device and you can't do a full regression of it. So for us, we will select 72, close state. And then I will apply. Don't be afraid by the error pop-up you will have now. Because by default, as you can see, Cube programmer try to reconnect. And when he reconnects, he will face for sure issue because we have closed the device. So first we have lost the connection. Then he tried to reload option byte that have failed. Then he still still some other errors. And finally, he failed to reconnect because we have no capability without debug authentication to reconnect to the device. But if I check still with my turret term. As you can see, I press reset. My application is working fine, okay? And you notice also the download slot image undefined. 
that means the on the installation have been complete, the previous version have been removed from the downloading slot. If I press the blue button, I still have my event detection with encryption. So now your application is ready to go on the field, in the meaning that we have closed the device, so you can't reopen it except if you have got specific keys or certificates. You've got firmware update capabilities, the encryption of your data, which is secret somehow. So we have finished our application. Conclusion to this part, we have seen that PSA API is somehow quite simple to integrate and to understand. Simple to integrate thanks to our ecosystem which integrate everything for you. And you have seen that Secure Boot with Secure Firmware Update are now really accessible. All the complexity is handled by the Secure Manager for you. About our 12 security function, you can see the additional one we are able to achieve now. Conclusion of the Secure Manager. This is a full certified solution for you. PSA and CZIP Level 3. And it's completely integrated in the STM32 ecosystems to make the developer journey quite simple. You have PSA API, which allows to access some secure services, and you have the capability to pre-provision your secure storage. That means inject your secret in a secure way during the installation on production line. The secure update is fully managed and once it's made, you just need to take care about how to download a new file. Secure Manager features to go further or to give you more details. We also provide on this device two certificates signed by ST which allow an IoT authentication. There is two cloud packages, one for AWS, one for Azure, which demonstrate how you can use all these features. That means we've got these packages with the Secure Manager on all the user applications to register on IoT. Regarding the secure module, so it's a dedicated, uh, isolated secure application, either to extend your application or it could be a third party. For this, you need a specific development kit, which name is SMDK, and you need to sign a license for this. All the updates is managed individually by STUROT. I think you have seen this just before. Regarding the resources, again, I point out on these wiki portals, which is quite, quite, quite exhaustive in terms of information about the Secure Manager principle, but also on all the STM32H5 security features. Thanks for your attention.